This isn't a mini submarine tailing this mobula array. It is a new kind of tag that will reveal what the rays do on their deep sea dives, and we're deploying these tags as just one part of an even bigger research expedition. Hello from Ocean Explorer. We're on mission in the Azores, a remote volcanic island chain in the North Atlantic. We've got 10 days to explore as much as we can here. This is On Mission. The Azores are part of the world's longest mountain range, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. There are hundreds of underwater mountains in the Azores. They're called seamounts and they are bursting with life, but they aren't well explored. So we've got a team of scientists from the University of the Azores to investigate the life here from the surface to the deep. Here's how we do the science. At Princess Alice Seamount, our dive teams get in the water twice a day, every day, to tag Chilean devil rays. The devil rays are normally solitary, migrating vast distances across the open ocean. But here, they gather in huge numbers every summer. This seamount is one of the only places in the world where this happens, which makes this the perfect place to study them. Even though they're a familiar sight at the ocean's surface, we don't actually know that much about them. These devil rays are some of the deepest divers of all the sharks and rays in the world, and we only figured that out 10 years ago. George is part of the science team who made this discovery. They don't just chill at the surface. They can dive to almost 2,000 meters depth. We're talking about freezing temperatures of three degrees Celsius. Uh, we're talking about the tremendous pressure of about 200 kilos per square centimeter. They could be diving for food. And that's the question George and his team hope to answer by tagging the rays. What we do is we deploy this harness-like attachment which we do by free diving, which is also very light in terms of our presence in the environment because there's no noise, there's no bubbles, like in traditional scuba diving. And with that, we can deploy these tags that are not rigidly attached to the animal, they're actually floating as a little submarine or a little pilot fish that is following the animal. They can be programmed to release after just a couple of hours or a couple of weeks. These tags aren't just telling us the animal's location, they're multi-sensor tags that can show us potential hunting behaviors, like speeding up or circling around to search for prey. Just came back from a very successful day um, out with the mobula rays. There was about uh, 17 to 20 mobula rays. Got another couple of tags and... Tag a whale shark. A whale shark. A whale shark came out of the blue, swam straight towards us, and George, the scientist, swam down and tagged it. A very successful day. Very good day. Nice. Good job, guys. Yay. This was exciting because unlike the rays, whale sharks don't show up here super consistently. They're a bit more unpredictable. You know what else is unpredictable? The weather. We found ourselves dealing with some swell. So we waited out the weather in calmer waters near one of the islands, and that put us in a shark nursery. Juvenile smooth hammerheads spend their first few years in the sheltered coastal waters around this island. We need to understand what's happening here, why they're here, why they're on the north of the island, not in the south. They might be here because there's a lot more food. They might be here because the surface temperatures are different. Once they reach a certain size, age, we don't know what the exact trigger is. Um, they start migrating offshore and so this, this is exactly why it's crucial because this is their preparation for the, for the rest of the life. This drives their competitiveness. So how do you figure out whether the sharks are here for food or something else? Rob's got one way. You mow the lawn with a sonar and a drone. We stick this thing in the water, this is the sonar system, and cover the area by sweeping back and forth like you do with a lawnmower. The sonar tells us where there are schools of fish and how deep they are. Then Rob flies the drone along those same lines looking for the sharks. They go into these very, very shallow surface aggregations where I can see them with the drone, which for me is wonderful. So we can count the sharks, we can size the sharks, we can get a grasp of where they have the highest densities. I will give you a challenge. We've already done this part here. 
the echo sounding transect is in the middle and it continues along there. We're here on this blue dot at the bottom. So now we're just zigzagging across this echo sounding transect, providing us data of the, of the surface abundances of these sharks along the transect line. If the sharks and the fish are consistently showing up in the same places, it suggests that it is the presence of food that draws the sharks here. And if that's the reason they're here, then protecting this area from fishing is a good way to protect this vulnerable species. Meanwhile, the deep sea team was busy exploring coral gardens around an underwater volcano. These coral communities are kind of like the deep sea version of forests. They provide shelter for other animals, fish hide out here, some sharks lay their eggs here, they play a role in regulating the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and they're ancient and slow growing. Some of the corals, these uh, ecosystems, can live for thousands of years. Marina is a deep sea ecologist focused on corals. She and her colleagues are working to visit and document every one of the hundreds of seamounts in the Azores. Uh, the black coral can live up to 4,000 years. So they live very long, but they grow less than one millimeter a year. This means that they are very sensitive to any impact from man and because they will take a long time to recover. So it's important to protect them because if we lose them, it's going to be very difficult to recover them again. We are trying to answer different questions. Why do they exist in a certain area and not in other areas? How many species there are associated with these ecosystems? Are they new to science? When we discovered a deep sea coral reef patch during a sub dive, we wanted to get live samples to Marina's lab back on land. Because the corals are highly adapted to their deep sea environment, we needed to move fast and get them into specialized tanks. In these tanks, Marina will simulate future ocean conditions and study how the corals respond. This will help us understand the fate of deep sea ecosystems as the ocean warms up, becomes more acidic, and has less oxygen. That's just a little bit of what we got up to on this expedition. We've got more stories from the Azores on the way, and Ocean Explorer is heading to the Red Sea. Keep an eye on our channel to follow along.